Greetings from the late afternoon, everyone. Or at least that's when I began to write the script. Uh, although it's also whenever I'm recording it now. Uh, and that that's not part of the script. Like the, um, whatever. Moving on. Uh, before the video starts, some quick stuffs for it. Uh, there are major spoilers for Terraria in this, as you probably guessed. So don't watch this if you don't want those spoilers. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to be discussing bosses as they are in expert and master mode but specifically using the stats of master mode because they're flashier and more exciting you know bigger numbers equals happy sort of thing so yeah though i won't be discussing any like stuff from secret seeds because i have a skill issue and don't do them and also um they're i just don't think they're really the main part of terraria so yeah uh, and finally, since Terraria is a bright, colorful game, there will be some flashing lights throughout the video. Um, and for some reason, there were um, some parts which flashed, like, outside of that, that um, I think it's like a visual bug. So uh, if you see any Plantera footage in the background, um, there's going to be some of that, unfortunately. So you have been warned. Uh, leave if you don't want to get lights flashing or you know just like minimize this tab or something just as long as you're good um with all that being said let's start talking about why the moon lord is such a dangerous foe and at that why the answer is so interesting other than the fact that i have a skill issue now Let's get the basics out of the way. If you're asked the question, why is the Moon Lord so powerful or dangerous or whatnot, there's a few things which probably come pretty quickly to your mind. Um, first of all, damage. You know, that funny number which makes you go, Arr. The Moon Lord does a lot of damage. Uh, I'm sure you already know about the Phantasmal Death Ray doing more damage than uh, basically any other boss can. I mean, I looked around, I couldn't find anything. Uh, in Master Mode, it does 450 base damage and is only rivaled by a few... anything, really. Um, like, uh, the Destroyer's Head, like if you get hit by it, which does 420. But most other, like, attacks that the Moon Lord has also do a good bit of damage other than contact damage with a hand socket which apparently doesn't increase across difficulties maybe uh you'll see a lot of like 180s uh basically which as you can probably tell is still pretty damaging even if it won't immediately wipe out your entire health bar then that speaking of you have health of the boss not of you uh, the moon lord has way higher health than any other boss other than Medusa, I guess. Because of that, uh, you're gonna be in the fight for a while with a total of over 277,000. Combine that with healing from the clots in the tongue attack, uh, if you can't kill them in time at least, and you have one tanky boss. So, yeah. The Moon Lord has the stats for the role of final boss, but let's be honest here, that's not quite it. I mean, sure, it, it does matter, but it's not really why the Moon Lord is the final boss. Terraria boss fights have a lot to do with dodging, unless you're doing a face tanking build, you maniac- no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but let's talk about the, the dodging thing. In Terraria, most bosses can be beaten using a certain dodging tactic I will call circling. It's pretty straightforward. Just go in big circles around or near the boss, and because you're always on the move and in different directions, it works really well. Of course, it won't always be like a circle. Um, like say on Golem, uh, you'll probably be moving in a different shape like an arc or a straight line. Um, and it doesn't work on all bosses necessarily. A uh, good example of a boss it just wouldn't work on is Plantera, uh, at least in her second form. It can work, but gets messy, you know? 
but it does still work in a lot of cases, even with the Moon Lord to a degree. Although, not really. Yeah. For most bosses, you go in your good old circles and occasionally dodge an incoming projectile, but for the most part, the integrity of whatever shape you're doing holds pretty well. But with the Moon Lord, it's different. It's relentless. You'll be on the lookout to dodge stuff constantly with a variety of attacks which all come with their own difficulties. The most basic attack the Moon Lord has, considering circling, is probably the one where it shoots those phantasmal spheres that go after you after a second. You'll see it on the video. When it comes to dodging this, all you really have to do most of the time is run away in a straight line so that they'll go at the wrong angle or explode early or something like that. But still, this can make circling more complicated, since getting distance on these can be really important sometimes, and that can mess with the shape of your circle. Also, sometimes it's just in your way, you know? Then you have the phantasmal bolts, uh, those like straight shooting things, uh, and they track your movement. Uh, I'm sure you'll also see those on your screen. And man, do I just hate this one sometimes. But aside from my bubbling rage, nah, I'm kidding. Uh, this move can also just, in general, be really tricky sometimes. Because the bolts are so fast and predict your movement pretty well, you'll be forced to quickly change your direction. Uh, if you have it, a dashing item, like the Master Ninja Gear, is great for this. Otherwise, I don't know, you can use a slimy saddle or something to fall quickly or... I don't, know, I don't know, wings that make you go up faster. Uh, but either way, it messes with your movement pattern. It breaks the circle and makes you move around weirdly. Then there's those eyeball missile things, which are named, you guessed it, phantasmal eyes. Uh, these admittedly aren't quite as bad, usually, but still, do not underestimate them, because if you're going down while they are, you're kind of in trouble. If a phantasmal bolt comes your way while things are out, changing direction gives these eyes ground on you, you know? Because you're changing direction, they can turn quickly too and they'll catch up to you if you're not really fast. And things can get complicated, but we'll talk about that more in a couple minutes. But finally, you know it. You love it, maybe. You hate it, probably. The phantasmal death ray. Uh, funnily enough, for being so dangerous, it honestly is probably the friendliest to circling and movement in general, though it can still be a big disruption. Aside from the fact that's probably the point in a way, that it's dangerous, but it kind of works with movement, which is really cool game design, or at least I like it. Uh, it, whatever, it can still prove to be a problem. It forces you to move in a certain direction, lest you lose almost your entire health bar, just saying. Combined with things that make you move in different or awkward ways, you can be met with some death, a lot of death. Actually. Thinking about it, and I definitely did not plan this transition from the start, by the way, uh, that might just be why the Moon Lord is so interestingly difficult as a boss. I mean, think about it. These attacks can be scary, but does it really mean much if you have basic formulas to deal with them? The answer is no. But when you combine some of these attacks, you get some more complex situations. be clear here, when I'm referring to complexity, I mean the amount of active threats that are present at the same time. Generally, this comes in the form of multiple types of projectiles being active at once. Take uh, Plantera's first form, for example. While in her first form, Plantera has those straight shooting seeds, which I forgot actually can track you a little bit, but that's besides the point. Uh, the bouncy thorn ball things, and the contact damage of hooks when they shift around or rest in particularly inconvenient spots. Uh, because she doesn't really try to run into you, I won't be counting her own contact damage, though. Um, also, you could include the poison debuff, but I'm not going to because it's 
part of getting hit anyway, so whatever. Since the three attacks we are counting, though, are pretty consistently present, let's say she has generally a complexity of three here. You get the point. Most late game bosses tend to have three to four in complexity. Of course, there are exceptions, but that's irrelevant to this analysis. So the Moon Lord is pretty similar um, to the three to four tendency, actually, with the phantasmal eyes and phantasmal spheres sticking around for a while between attacks and the Phantasmal Bolt and Phantasmal Death Ray coming from separate sources, the Moon Lord also lands in that 3 to 4 range a lot. A lot of Phantasmalness overall. Or at least it stays in that 3 to 4 range for the first phase of the fight. In what we will deem the second phase though, when you break all of the eyes, things step up a notch. Uh, kind of. Honestly, depending on how you measure it, the complexity will stay at about three to four because there will be more death rays it might hit five sometimes but that's not that crazy you know there is something else though let's uh let's change our definition of complexity here shall we complexity is the amount of active threats at a time and the amount of active sources for those threats at a time so let's look at plant era again the second phase this time, though, uh, specifically. For active threats at a time, let's say you have contact damage with Plantera herself, contact damage with her hooks, and contact damage with her tentacles, since each can be problematic at times. Then you have the sources of the threats. To keep things from being too complex, I'm not going to count her tentacles here since they originate from other things. Hence, they're not really sources. So we have Plantera herself, and then her hooks, which I'm going to group together, as you usually only run into one at a time. Looking at both of these, Plantera's complexity can be considered to be three threats and two sources. Of course, this could change depending on who you ask or what mood they're in. I might change my mind in two days, honestly, on these numbers. But anyway, you get the point. Moving on to the Moon Lord again. The Moon Lord at first has what we'll say is three sources, left, right, and top eyes. Simple enough. And it actually stays like that uh, for the whole fight under this thought process. When you beat an eye, it comes out and acts as a different source, making a fair trade. Uh, as a side note, you could argue that um, the empty socket, because it has contact damage, is a source of um, danger. But I'm not going to because it's not really that bad and it's not really much of anything. So, we can pretty safely assume that the Moon Lord will typically have a complexity of four threats and three sources. This is pretty high, all things considered. Few bosses meet this combo of the two. Other than Mechdusa, I guess. So, um, you know, it makes sense why the Moon Lord can be the final boss under this as well. Well, that was a bunch of stuff. Let's quickly recap and tie up a little nice bow on it or uh, whatever. <laughs> the Moon Lord, when compared to other bosses, has higher damage numbers overall. And the same goes for health. Other than mech- Okay, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop. It also teleports to you and has regen, both of which introduce a new mechanic to the fight, which you have to learn in order to not... fail. <laughs> Along with this, the Moon Lord's attacks have really unique ways to stump whatever movement pattern you're trying to do, especially if you're trying to do circling, and make you figure out how to adapt to that. And when these awkward attacks combine, they force you to adapt to even more situations by dodging all of them simultaneously or losing a lot of health, which can sometimes be your whole health bar because of the higher attack numbers. And this only happens more as the fight progresses, as you can literally be surrounded by danger at times. As a, as a quick side note, isn't this boss design just 
awesome. It makes you think so much about literally everything you do. Every movement, every attack, how much you want to focus on firing your weapon, and how much you want to focus on dodging. I, I love it so much. <laughs> uh, but side notes aside, uh, the combination of these makes the Moon Lord quite formidable. So, yeah, you know, you got all the pieces to make the Moon Lord the final boss, and I think that's awesome. And there you go. Uh, an analysis on Terraria's final challenge. Other than- no, I'm kidding. I won't do it again. Uh, but both why the Moon Lord can be really difficult <laughs> sometimes, but also why it's a really interesting boss as well. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the analysis. If you did, you know, please consider liking and subscribing and all that jazz because you'll get to see more stuff like this and I like seeing the funny numbers personally. Though, to be honest, I had some trouble putting my thoughts onto the digital page, uh, some trouble putting into words. Uh, it seemed kind of messy to me as I was reading it, but I hope everything came across properly. Um, as always, please don't hesitate to share your thoughts, including any criticisms you might have. I want to improve these analyses after all, and like I said, this one felt a little bit messy and I'd love to hear any of your guys' thoughts on how that could be improved. Um, also, if you have any suggestions for possible future videos, do tell, uh, if you want to, at least. I need more ideas. Anyway, um, see you soon with, uh, something. We'll see. Bye!